Nowadays, Australia is known for having practically every animal that could kill you. But what about back in the Triassic, the Jurassic, the Cretaceous? When dinosaurs ruled the world, what did Australia have? Did Australia have any large theropods? I mean, when we look across nearly every other continent, it is more than evident that they had large theropods. North America had the Tyrannosaurus rex. South America, the Giganotosaurus. Africa, Spinosaurus. Asia, Dinocurus. Europe, Torvosaurus. And even Antarctica had the Krylophosaurus, which I will say may not be as big as the others, but still, not tiny. Yet Australia's largest was the Australovenator. Or was it? Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, bringing you another video all about Australia's possible largest theropod. This is based on a 2020 study that was released by Anthony Romilio et al., which detailed the possible discovery of Australia's largest carnivore. Sit back, grab some popcorn, and let's get into the video. Just to give you all some background knowledge, Prior to this discovery and research paper, the largest and most complete theropod in Australia was the Australovenator, which measured around 6 metres in length and 2 metres at the hips. It also would have weighed in at approximately 500 kilograms, so maybe about the size of a brown bear. There was also a theropod known as Raptor or Lightning Claw, which kind of sounds like a raptor when you first say it, but you know, I digress. However, when I say that this dinosaur's fossil was fragmentary, I mean fragmentary with its fossil remains including only one left first metacarpal, which I'm putting on the screen and you can clearly see it's a tiny bit of a fossil. Plus, there isn't a widespread variety of research papers based on this dinosaur, nor many others, as is common with many Australian-based dinosaurs. I've seen some estimates putting it all the way up to 9 meters and others as low as 5 meters, so clearly it's a bit iffy and hence can't really be reliable. Either way, these two have nothing on the theropod that Romilio details in his research paper. A trail of footprints which were discovered in Queensland, Australia, measured 79 centimetres in size. As you can see by the photographs taken, this theropod was undoubtedly large. This discovery was researched by Anthony Romilio and his team in order to learn more about Australia's dinosaur fauna. Originally, these footprints were discovered over 70 years ago in the 1950s and 60s within a coal mine, specifically the Walloon Coal Measures. Now, you may ask, if these tracks have been known for over 70 years, then why hasn't there been any papers published about it until recently? Well, my dear viewer, it's as simple as a lack of working paleontologists within Australia, and hence, there hasn't been enough available resources in order to study a set of old footprints. But it seems that issue has changed, as through predictive calculating, comparisons to other theropods and other techniques, Romilio's paper suggests that this carnivore may have reached a length of 10 meters and a height at the hips of 3.25 meters. Although the weight can't be outright known, I'd at the very least put it in the several metric ton range, since it comes close to many larger theropods and even some mega theropods. And if these size estimates are accurate, it places it above the Allosaurus and closely below the Acrocanthosaurus. This may have placed it as one of the largest Jurassic theropods to exist. Who knows, this massive predator may have even tried to hunt Australia's own sauropod, the Rohidosaurus. It seems where a sauropod is, there's a large theropod to try and get a feast. Now, I just preface to say that technically there's no actual name given to this theropod, and that's why I'm just naming it as a theropod of Australia, or largest theropod. Since there's no skeletal remains, and there's only really been one research paper about it, no name has been given, and there's only theories as to what family it belongs to. Some say carnosaurs, others say megaraptors, but we can only hope in the future that maybe some skeletal remains are found, and we're able to distinctly place it in a family and name it. In terms of geography, much of Australia was land, and sedimentary bases were formed in both eastern and western regions. The vegetation during this time saw the disappearance of forked seed ferns, but horsetails, club mosses, ferns, cycads, and conifers remained prominent in the environment. Now, there's no doubt that this would have been the dominant predator of Australia, being the pinnacle of the apex of its region. Although it is unfortunate that no skeletal remains have been discovered yet, and hence we haven't been able to properly identify and measure this dinosaur, I'm sure glad that paleontologists are starting to look at the remains of prehistoric life in Australia. I have a feeling with the years to come, the underrated location of Australia should come above the radar for fossils. And to be honest, I rarely hear any paleontological news come out of that continent. So to see it may have housed one of the largest predators of the Jurassic period is always great. It only needs me to speculate what other unknown dinosaurs may have inhabited this expansive world. Now, we've reached the end of the video, and I hope you enjoyed learning about Australia's unknown meat-eating theropod. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. See ya.